things like affordability, mortgage rates, and other national influential factors are beginning to pick up overall activity. Now, as you know, all real estate is local. Each local market is different, and the principal reason for that is that uh, unlike commodities, whether gold, corn, or even clothes, where you can ship things around, you cannot pick up real estate and relocate it someplace else. It's stuck uh, to the land. Uh, therefore, all real estate is local. And the Florida market certainly has uh, shown a much better signs of recovery in terms of sales activity. Not the prices, uh, but the sales. But that's the first part of the healing process. You need the buyers step in, inventory falls, then later prices begin to firm up. And, and as other uh, more local experts will say, the prices appear to be already firming up uh, in the local area, which is uh, another uh, encouraging uh, news. Uh, first, uh, I want to explain some of the little uh, puzzling situation, uh, aside from the actual factual situation, some of the puzzle. So the fact is we have the best affordability conditions by far in the past couple of years, uh, extremely high. If one looks at uh, the, the measure is comprised of three uh, ingredients. So one is people's income, higher income, higher affordability, uh, interest rates, lower mortgage rates, higher affordability, and home prices. Uh, lower prices means higher affordability. So what one sees is that among three variables all combined, it is at the best opportune time to be a buyer. Uh, regarding the existing inventory, which is the blue line, uh, is much larger segment of the market. Uh, so one can say maybe it is still above normal, slightly above normal nationally. Uh, I mean, some local markets are beginning to really heat up a lack of inventory situation. But uh, even at the national level, it is a six-year low-level inventory. So it's also beginning to heal. So rising home sales, falling inventory, and the next step would be beginning to see some price growth and I think by December of this year uh, compared to one year ago, so December to December prices, I would not be surprised uh, if it is say one, two or three percent price increase nationwide. South Florida, I said it before, I think it will surprise the rest of the country and I would not be surprised with 10 percent uh, price appreciation say December of this year versus December of last year. And, and, and I'm, this is not some wishful thinking. I think you know, one just looks at all the data, what's happening regarding the distressed inventory quickly being eaten up, multiple bidding process occurring, job recovery, net positive migration factors, overcorrection in Naples, overcorrection in Fort Myers, overcorrection in Miami, all those factors would suggest that there is a, a potential for a much stronger price recovery situation. So I show about the visible inventory being low. How do you define shadow inventory? Well, one way to define it is people who are not paying their mortgages and sooner or later it will go into foreclosures and it will become a shadow inventory and, and that shadow will become visible. Well, this is a shadow inventory, seriously delinquent mortgages. So it is much higher than normal, without a doubt. This is a legacy impact of the bubble crash years, but it's been trending down. So the bucket of visible inventory is trending down, the bucket on shadow inventory is trending down, and the bucket, which I don't have a chart, on the REOs, already REOs, that is also trending down. So all three buckets are trending down, moving in the right direction, sales are rising. So it doesn't concern me that there is this shadow because it's falling. I would be concerned if the visible inventory is falling, but the shadow inventory is rising. Then I would be concerned that, that, that this tidal wave is developing. But the tidal wave is not developing. This wave is weakening uh, steadily. So the number of shadow inventory today is lower than what it was one year ago. One year ago, it was lower than two years ago. So everything is moving in the uh, right direction. So this is not to diminish the existence of shadow, but trying to imply the dynamics of it. Visible inventory is falling, shadow inventory is also falling. This is the uh, credit scores of those people who are obtaining loans. Now Fannie and Freddie, they're buying loans from Wells Fargo, Bank of America, and others. So the Bank of America would not make that loan if they cannot sell it to Fannie and Freddie. Only making the loan because they can sell it to Fannie and Freddie. 
So under normal years, what I consider normal, I think this is for year 2002 period. I can find the data a little prior. Uh, the 2002 is probably something similar to say year 2000 uh, time uh, period. And I would consider that to be normal because if you see uh, writings by economists, there was no mention of bubble or crash. Housing was very, very uneventful uh, news. So let's consider that to be normal. Simply put, underwriting stand goes back to normal, not lax, back to normal, home sales would get boosted by 15 to 20%. There were 15 to 20% additional home sales for you uh, if we went back to the normal underwriting standards. And it's justifiable that it should go back to normal underwriting standards because you may want to restrict lending if things get a little out of whack. But this is showing home price in relation to the rent ratio. Historically, it is a one-to-one -one relationship, meaning that rents rise 5%, home values rise 5%, one-to-one -one relationship. During the bubble, it broke down. Things got out of hand. Then crash uh, brought us back to in line. Now we are pretty much back in line, which means that if the rents are rising 3%, home values should be rising 3%. So we are completely over the bubble period. Uh, but right now the home values, at least nationwide, is not increasing. I mean, it's not decreasing in any meaningful sense either, but it's not increasing even though the rents are rising. Uh, I believe that this year uh, would be, again, I'm seeing encouraging signs, but I'm encouraged by the fact that job creation is occurring. That means more potential buyers, solid stock market recovery, Rising rents uh, will begin to tip some renters into buying uh, the pent-up release of household formation. The, but there's a one potential huge positive and huge negative. One positive is underwriting standards go back to normal. That's 15 to 20 percent additional sales. One negative is Washington policy. So this is the forecast of the, the economic activity with no recession, modest price growth, so increases in home sales, which I have already mentioned. Uh, but I want to go with, leave you with the two final charts. Uh, one is, uh, I think, uh, two most important presidents of the past century. One Democrat, uh, one Republican. Uh, FDR, at the time of war, Second World War, said nation of homeowners is unconquerable. And if you are property owners, you don't throw rocks. Uh, because you want to protect your property. Uh, if you see many of the revolution that occurs across the centuries, whether the French Revolution, Russian Revolution, Chinese Revolution, or even today's uh, Egyptian Revolution, there's a sizable number of people who are not homeowners and they feel they are not part of the country. Uh, and it's easy to uh, get some type of social uh, eruption uh, in that case. America has been very fortunate to have social stability because we are property owners. You want to defend uh, the rights of property ownership. Ronald Reagan came to NAR function uh, when he was president and said, American tax code is complex, get rid of it. Mm -hmm. Simplify it. But he said, do not touch the mortgage interest deduction. Mm -hmm. And I only bring this up because there are many people in Washington who are saying, let's simplify it, let's get rid of the mortgage interest deduction. And we are saying that's wrong uh, because the American mortgage interest deduction represents part of the American long uh, policy uh, standing uh, regarding what, how we believe the country should be shaped. So thanks for your patience and uh, thank you.